Yo, it's Jazzy Jazz. Welcome to Jazz's Place. I am so excited and honored. I've got magnificence in the building right now. The one and only Jesse Smollett, who has been beloved by so many fans. I know you may not have felt it six <laughs> years ago, but you were. People were riding for you, that. I Thank promise you. you. Thank you. And the multimedia maven from managing Missy Elliott, the love and hip hop yes. franchises, movies, tours. The one and only Mona Scott Young. Oh, oh, looking gorgeous. Oh, yes. Jazz, Jazz's place is nice. Yes, yeah, so nice. Yes, it's very nice. We got and food. you know, that means you know. a lot because you know they live in some mansions and whatnot. Like, oh, listen, <laughs> and, and, and this is beautiful. And this is <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me say this because I was just talking about this earlier. Multimedia Maverick. Multimedia yes. Maverick what versus Maven. No, it, it, that's just my own. Person. I agree because Maverick is what you are because you are doing cutting edge work. You are taking the leadership in so many elements of media, a maverick. Thank Yo, you so my much. Bad. Yeah. A you maverick know, so. is a nonconformist, someone who does not subscribe to the status quo. Yeah. I'd like to think that's me. Uh, and I, I, and I, have I broken think barriers. You. I think no, you. you have broken barriers. Thank I mean, you. you think about reality television, you really defined it. Wow. You really Thank define you. it when you think about love and hip hop and all of the franchises that it expanded to. I mean, yes, a man, a you leader, an Thank innovator, yes. <laughs> and showing yes. that everyone's story is worthy. Everyone's yes. story is worthy of telling and everyone has a story to tell. So yes. I, I think that that's actually really powerful. Yes. Yeah. Well, speaking of powerful, The Lost Holiday, new movie, hitting the theaters Friday, September 27th. That's right, yes. that's right. And it is, I had the opportunity to see it with people from the community. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. And there were tears. There was so much laughter, mm -hmm. and this is a beautiful story of love and surprises and people coming together. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, but what inspired you all to do this story, Jesse? Six years in the, I mean, eight years yeah, in the making. Eight years mm -hmm. in the making. Um, we've been telling this story a lot, so forgive me if y'all ain't heard it before. But <laughs> you um, ain't heard it here. You ain't heard it here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was really inspired by my mother. And my mother in the mid 70s as a black woman married into a non-black family and growing up in the 80s and the 90s being raised by her we it wasn't always easy for her to navigate that you know it was a, it, it was a much different time it's not necessarily easy now but it was certainly more difficult then and um you know the things that she went through with my father's side of the family and then when he passed away almost a decade ago i saw that even though they were no longer together uh, and hadn't been for some time, I saw the way that she then bonded with his mother, my grandmother. And so the basis of Jason, my character, and Cassandra, which is Vivica's character, is really based on, my mother is based on, my character is based on my mother, and the character of Cassandra is really based on my grandmother. Wow. And seeing the grace and the forgiveness that my mother was able to exude during that time, and you see them now, 10 years later, and they're like the best of friends. Right. You know, I was at my, we had a birthday dinner um, for me a couple of uh, a couple of months ago on my birthday, and Vivica was there too, and you could, you could see it that, you know, they're, they're like this, and that really inspired me to make amends with my father, although he was no longer here in the physical form, to make amends with him, because there were things that were left unsaid between us before he passed, and, you know, that I would never get to say to him in the physical, but, doing that work and really like properly learning how to grieve and which you know gr grief goes like this you know yes no um, that's right it really was inspiring uh, uh for the lost holiday and then you tap into the the idea of being gay and so many of my mentors that are in like their 70s uh especially in the 80s during the height of the aids pandemic of losing partners losing mm -hmm. their losing their life partners and not being able to go into the hospital not being able mm. to go to the funeral, not being able mm. to say a proper goodbye, as we all should be mm. able to do, or being extracted from their legacy by their families for whatever reason, and just the pain that goes with that. But when they tell those stories, when they would tell me these stories, it also, I know that there's sadness, there's so much sadness around that, but there was so much hope, and it's such, such, wow. they had so much hope about what, about the fact that 
No, their partner is still here. They still speak to their partners. And I feel like, I know I sound crazy when I say that, but I know that I've spoken to my father since he's been gone and not in the way of like a, you know, ghoulish type of ghost right. sort no of way, but actually yeah. in the way of spirit. And that's definitely what, uh, you know, inspired The Lost Holiday. That's beautiful. So with your father, what were some of the conflicts? What were some of the challenges? I mean, you know, we just didn't necessarily always see eye to eye, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and I don't want to talk bad about him because he's not here anymore because he was right. a good man. He was a hardworking man and a, and a good human being. He just didn't know what he didn't know. Yeah. You know, but what I will say is, is that, you know, I grew up with a father. I grew up with a mother that was extremely militant, extremely and extremely liberating. Yeah. you know for for all of us uh and then my father he was also extremely militant but he also had his ideas about homosexuality yeah and he would say things uh you know while i was growing up and he just didn't know you know and but once my mother told him uh years later and i had been estranged from him uh, that I was gay, he instantly called me and apologized and he told her, he said that he would never, he said, well, I'll never talk bad about a gay person again, I'll be on the front lines of every gay march. That's what's up. And so he did, he did call me and he apologized and it was one of those things where it's like, you don't know that you need something until you get it. Yeah. And, 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 but there was still, with that said, we started towards a path of healing, but the healing wasn't done before he passed. Right. So that's really where we stood. But I do believe that just as we all deserve grace, I think that even people that, that, that maybe say things or do things that we have to understand what their intentions are. Absolutely. You know, and not, not judge them based on what they say, but more so how they react when they're approached with what they said. And how they evolve. How they evolve. Because, yeah, because we're, because all, it's we're not ever always, evolving. Yeah. Ever and then it's also about their limitations, sure. right, of what they know. And it's interesting to hear you say that because as much as, you know, I've heard you tell mm -hmm. some of the stuff, um, I've never heard you talk about your father's own feelings. And sure. you say that Cassandra is inspired by your grandmother yeah but i'm hearing now a little bit of your father and sure Cassandra. sure so it's all of those influences that absolutely you channeled into the characters that's interesting absolutely. see i'm learning things every day as well. <laughs> I, no, love that's, I love that's it that's the beauty of this movie because you know as we and and i'd love to hear from you what your takeaways were what you connected to because it's been interesting to hear from people from all different walks of life and ethnicities and sexual orientation all talking yeah about what they've connected to because it's been something different right. for all of them sure. right and usually you tell a story and there's a very kind of specific message and theme and element to that that you're trying to convey but I think when it's really special is when you can tell a story that people take away what they need right. yeah, from, exactly. you know? And that's what I'm finding is happening with The Lost Holiday. And I think you talk about being a maverick. Mm. This is a love story between you and Vivica in it terms is. of coming it together. Is. But it's, it's also a family love story. It's a family so love story. Yes. But it's also a love story between two men. And we don't woman. have enough stories you know, a sa of same-sex couples. Sure. And, mm -hmm. and here you had a daughter, you know. Right. So talk to me about that, both of you. What inspired you to get involved in telling this very important story, not just for the LGBTQ community, exactly. but particularly for our community yes. who struggles with this issue. And, and who not only struggles specifically with the issue of acceptance, right, within the gay community, but the issue of forgiving each other. I think, you know, mm -hmm. We, we see a lot of fractures in, you know, the black family dynamic, whether it's an absent dad or whether it's an estranged, you know, a siblings. And so that pain, that hurt, that generational trauma is unfortunately something that permeates a lot of our family dynamic. No doubt. And so, you know, this story, although it's told specifically about this same sex couple who is dealing with a lot of what you know, we're talking about it, I think, touches on the broader theme of just family and healing and reconciliation and forgiveness in a way that's, you know, just very um, relatable. And you know, it's so interesting, like in the screening, the laughter. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. you all managed to sell it, tell this story with such delightful humor, humor. joy 
is the word that I'm saying. But that's yeah. what we are as a people. You know that's I mean? right. That's what we are as a people. We take we take our traumas, we take our tragedies, our, our tragedies and we find we find joy because we for so long we've had no choice right, but absolutely. to do that yes. and i also think that you know as someone who exists in these intersections of being gay of being black i actually think we get the short end of the stick on many things but yeah. we get the short end of the stick as far as the homophobia storyline is mm-hmm. you know i think that it somehow has become this running theme as if the black community is so much more homophobic than every other community. No, but exactly. I, I don't subscribe to that idea because exactly. I have British friends and German friends and Italian friends and friends from Australia and they all deal with homophobia as well. Right. We know it within our community because we are in fact within our communities, exactly. right? So exactly. those communities that we are possibly that we are not necessarily a part of, we don't get to see how much they deal with it. Homophobia and 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 prejudging people and having preconceived notions about people before you even know it, that is a human epidemic. That mm-hmm. doesn't exist just yes. within our communities. Facts. And what we see is Facts. is that this film we've seen we've we pre- we premiered it in Miami, London, Seattle, DC, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York. Every single city, it has been all different walks of life, different mm-hmm. different races, cultures, religions, sexualities, genders. There was a woman that came uh, uh, came she's a Vietnamese woman came in Los Angeles, drove 52 miles. And she said that she had to be there, and she was at the screening, and she was just weeping, talking about her son, wow. who's gay. You know what I mean? And it's like the, it's those things that I feel like we have to point out the fact that we're so much more alike than not, yeah. culturally, race-wise, sexual, whatever the the quote unquote difference is that society conditions us to believe that is what we are so different. We actually have so much more in common than not, and I hope that when people leave the lost holiday, they see that it's never too late to make amends. It's never too late to pick up that phone and forgive somebody. It's never too late if you've done something to call someone and ask for forgiveness. Yes. We're too wrapped up in our egos. Yes. And I think that yes. we gotta Amen, start y'all. Amen, y'all. Amen, y'all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Preach. Yeah, preach. No, that is, that is Pastor <laughs> Jesse. Yes. 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 Preach it. No, Pastor Jesse is. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. Come on. Come on. No, but that's facts. No, that mm. is facts. So speaking of love, no, so many people were in love with you, Jesse. Of all, of all sexes, races. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you Buddha? I am. Oh, can't you tell? I, I mean, he <laughs> played, wait, he played Buddha so well yes. in the movie. So that's great. Yeah. Well, just tell us a little. I mean, I'm not asking you to spill all the tea, but just give us a little bit of something. I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna take the Carrie Washington route and just, uh, you know. <laughs> Say that, I, say that I'm deeply in love, I'm in a committed relationship, Aww. and put a period after that. Well, let me ask you this, because now, like I just said, that I've kind of discovered this nugget of how you're your father you this because now, like I just said, that I've kind of discovered this nugget of how your father was infused, mm-hmm. you know, into this before. Is there anything about your personal life, your love story, that you brought to the characters in the script? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that Honestly, Jason, aside from the fact that he, aside from the fact that he loses his husband, obviously nobody would want that. Yeah. But Jason also is living the life that I intend to live. You know, Aww. it's the life that I want of adopting a baby, of Aww. of having that that family life. I remember when I was 19 years old, I wrote in my journal. Though, thank on, you, on thank you. A, a solid, yes. thank you. That is a beautiful thank you. thing. Such a thank blessing. You. Yeah, no, it is. And I've adopted. So have you? Oh wow, yeah. oh, that's amazing. So yeah. let that's me ask amazing. you this: when you watch the movie. What, was that the connection for you? There were so many connections. My, I lost my daughter several mm-hmm. years ago. Oh, she I'm was killed. Thank you. But an angel always with me. So yes. I related. So I related to the loss. Mm-hmm. My son is gay. Wow. So I related to that. And then my, I, one of my sons is also adopted, and I related to that. So wow. this was your movie. It was the movie. And you got fierce me. lashes and a red lip like a song. Come on. Hey, hey, Come on now. That's wow. amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. In fact, I showed that. you the picture of my son. Yes, yes, he yes. Your you look family. like my cousin. Look, looks like your I'm family. like your cousin. 
<laughs> that is funny. But yeah, so I related to many of the elements of the film, and it was a very beautiful and poignant and touching film oh. and moving film for me. I laughed, I cried, I did it all. So wow. I congratulate you on it. And fam, you got to check this movie out, The Lost Holiday. I promise you, it is thebomb.com. I love you for keeping Thank it real you. with us and telling us your story. That's the thing, though. That's what I mean when like art changes things and art brings people together. Yes. When I was doing Empire, so many people still to this day come up to me with their, you know, the kind of coming out story. Yeah. Right? And it's so interesting now that we've been on the road for a couple of months with the Lost Holiday to see people sharing their stories of grief, yeah. sharing their stories of how they got through it. And really the the most beautiful thing is sharing the stories of how they got and how they're getting through it. Yeah. And that is so powerful in the way that it connects us all. Yeah, yeah. no, it's an inspiring movie. It gives but us it's fun. It's yeah, it's to be vulnerable. And I yeah. and I appreciate you saying that because that's the thing too people hear us talk about how emotional and how, you know, touching and heartfelt but you're right, it is a fun movie. Yeah. Vivica A. Vivica Fox kills it. Is fantastic. <laughs> My goodness. And, and she yeah. is she and is just the the just a a fully, I keep saying this, a fully realized, I mean human being, of course, right. but a fully realized artist too. Yeah. This woman is drama, she is comedy, she mm -hmm. is action, she can kick your butt and then make you laugh and then make you cry in the same breath. Yeah. And I got a little bit of that all throughout the Lost Holiday. She was <laughs> She made me cry. She made me. <laughs> she made me laugh, and she slapped and the hell out of me. Your butt. She kicked my butt too. You know, I wasn't Uma Thurman in that, but, but still, she told me up pretty bad. You so, so you know. Yeah, no. It, all of the characters were very well formed characters, and Thank a lot you. of time you go to the movies and the characters kind of one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Your characters were all complex and had many dimensions, mm -hmm. and I think that's what made it so compelling. Thank you. Oh, well, listen, wow. I've got to give credit also to my co-writer Jarrell Chesney, who is yes. wonderful, and you know. Um, had just truly one of my closest friends. Yeah. So, uh, and an incredible cast. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Way, yeah. yeah. I now, constantly, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I constantly talk about Jabari and yeah. just his ability to convey so much in so, with so little screen time. Yes. Yeah. But his presence was powerful. Remained. Exactly. Oh, yes, exactly. throughout. Yeah. I mean, he is the title character. He is the Lost Holiday. He is the Lost Holiday. Yeah. 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 So, Mona, back yes. to love. 28 years you've known your husband. Come on. Yes. 28 Come on. years. 28 years. That's and why it's like, don't try to say Mona Scott, because she will straight up say Mona Scott. Scott. Yo. Yo. Yes, and, yes, and yes. you know what is so beautiful? You don't just have love for your husband, you are in love with your husband. I am. And, and, this, and, and at the same time, you are this boss doing everything, like I said, from concert tours to the fran reality mm. franchises to films. What's the secret of that long marriage? Mm. Um, he worships me. No. <laughs> Let me just let me just cut in real quick. As a man, I've seen Sean, and when I tell you, he's so secure in himself yes, that he's not afraid yes, yes, for yes, anybody yes. to know just how much he does adore her. Wow. And that to me is so special. Like he is literally like you would think that he's her bodyguard. Because well, you know that's how we met. Sean used to do security. Did you know this? Have a class member you He well. <laughs> Security. I have to tell you that story. Okay. What? Yes, I will tell you the whole story. But no, it is. So he was walking down, violating. Listen, let's say, let's say. Okay, you gotta, you gotta tell the story, Mo. You gotta I tell the story. Tell the story right now. No, but I will say this. Not only is he secure, but he understands my potential, my aspirations. Mm. And together, you know, we have been able to kind of forge a family and build a, a business and provide, you know, a legacy for our children. And I could not have done any of it, right, without him right there beside me. Wow. You know, I did an interview um, recently and they were like, well, you know, how does it feel being the breadwinner? And no, I'm not the breadwinner because I would not have the ability to be out here on this promo tour, right? You could have made the okay. bread without him, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that unconditional support is so necessary for us as women, right? When we're pursuing but wanting to have our family and our careers, you've got to have a support system. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Well, uh, two couple last questions. So, six years ago, you went through it. 
You yeah, I did, did I? yeah, you did. And I know you can't talk about specifics because you are appealing the case. Yeah. But for those who don't know, you were charged with creating a hoax. Mm -hmm. The charges were dropped. Mm -hmm. They were dismissed. Mm -hmm. they were. And then in a very unusual situation, you got recharged, yeah. which just doesn't happen. Like, right. yo, he was, you know, but, and that's the basis of the appeal. But getting through that, you had people like Mona who Absolutely. rode for you. Absolutely. And so many fans who yeah. rode for you, but I know it didn't feel like that during the time. How did you get through that? And just what are your general thoughts on that? You know, I mean, it, yeah, thank you for that. And thank you for approaching it in that way. Um, you know, it, it was difficult for anybody, if you, if you look, if you was living under a rock, <laughs> then, you, then you wouldn't know about it, but sure, it was it was really difficult. Yeah. And but what I know for sure is is that looking back, I'm so grateful that my family kind of guarded me from all of the stuff that was happening out there. Yeah. You know, it really it really is true. And I know that that sounds crazy. It's like, how did you not know how bad it was? Of course, I knew how bad it was getting. You know, um, politically or 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 legally or whatever it was, but I didn't really didn't know how many people had said things or whatever like that. I was in my circle of the support, nice. and I was guarded and I was protected by these people. Wow. So when from my mother to my siblings to Taraji, you know what I mean, and it's like then it's to Vivica, you know, and Mona really came in at a time where I was inside and I was not coming outside. I did not want to see anybody. I did not want to be seen. And Mona was the one that said. Get your pants on. Let's create. You're too talented to just just let this just fester inside mm -hmm. of you. You gotta get up. You gotta do something. And that is that is that's the reason why I'm still here. You know, physically, I would not still be here. And I say that fully, knowing, and I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed to say that I would not physically be here wow. any longer if it were not particularly for mm -hmm. the black women that were pushing me and helping me and lifting me up and loving on me when the rest of the world was telling me I was absolutely unlovable. Wow. And I was something that I'll never be able to truly repay. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Oh, that's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. That black girl magic. It's that black girl magic. It's so, so <laughs> necessary. You know, and not to just call on when you're in trouble, but to also, mm -hmm. you know, acknowledge and, and, and call on regularly because right. it's it's what makes the world go round. Right. And yeah. how happy am I that you took that advice and yes. you channeled all of that energy into this amazing project. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Because the end result of it is just such an exhibition of love and family and forgiveness absolutely right and grace yes all of the things that you know I'm so happy to see you apply to yourself every single day and now sharing it with the world and having people who witness and experience the movie you know apply it towards their own lives Thanks well our very us. last question and and I do want to find out what's next for you Mona because I know you've got a lot going on but the last question we ask everybody what's your bad habit what is your worst habit what is that Jesse and you do <laughs> I think my worst habit, honestly, not to get deep, but my worst habit was seeing myself through the eyes of other people. Mm. And so I think that every day it's 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 a challenge, but I'm getting better and better every single day at, you know, and it's not a big old F you. It literally, I care, I care about people. I do. And, but I also know who I am. That's right. And so that, that you know, I'd, I'd like to sit here and be like, oh, you know, I, I pick at pimples or something like something like that, but but yeah, it's like looking at yourself through the eyes of other people. I don't do that. Anymore. Yeah, you want to get to the place where it's like I'm gonna be me. You can either applaud or leave them or on not. the fucking room. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's all love. All Absolutely. Love. And Mona, your bad habit. What's your worst habit? habit. I mean, probably taking on. I, I, listen, before I take that last breath, I want to be able to say with the utmost confidence that I have explored every ounce of what I am mm. capable of in mm. this lifetime. That I have tried it all, that I have done it all, I want zero regrets. <laughs> that and sounds like so, a good habit. Well, no, but then that leads me to taking on a lot, right, <laughs> and trying to do it all simultaneously. And, you know, I, I'd love to get to a place where I allow myself to rest. Mm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I just am still, I still struggle with that. My mind is always racing. Even when I'm resting, I'm not really resting. Even when I'm, we just came off a tour, right, where I was physically out on the road with my husband. We had two tours going simultaneously. We got home, and you'd think I would have been like, 
whew, we're home, let's rest. I'm like, okay, what's next? She literally, you know, like, the day that she got off the tour, she's like, she's like, how did this fall by the wayside? I've been on it. How did, we got it. We got this promo tour from Los Angeles. Get it together. Get it together. So it's yeah. like, I mean, I would have said that your bad habit is, you know, you got a little break. We trying to go to lunch, and you gonna go and go shopping. <laughs> I mean, I'm just to. saying. Get it all in. Get like, it all in. Like, go like, can we eat? Day. I gotta make a few returns. Okay. <laughs> you know, I've gotta get everything done. And what's yet. next, Mona? What do you what do you have coming up new? Well, listen, for me right now, the lost holiday is so important that we get folks yeah. to tune in, to, yes. you know, turn out, I should say, to those theaters. We need the support of, you know, the community, the fans, the people who want to see themselves reflected on the big screen. The only way these movies continue to get made, the only way we, you know, can continue to provide opportunities yeah. for other content creators, actors, in front of behind the cameras who want to do this is that we need to see more of these made. Yes. And that and only happens if you support. Yes. yes. And Mona, you have created so many jobs for so many black creators. Um, thank, thank you all so much. Thank it's been such an honor us. to have them here. Have y'all here. I thank you for you inviting so us into your home. home. And, and, for and, and for cooking this spread. Yes, I really right. worked hard on that. <laughs> Lost Holiday in theaters yes. now, y'all. Don't miss it. You're going to love this film, Thank I promise you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Love Thank you. Thank you. you. This is so so a beautiful meeting. Yo, it's Jazzy Jazz. And I have the other part of the magnificence that has created the movie The Lost Holiday. Love the movie. It is dope, fam. You got to check it out. It is in theaters right now. And two very important characters, Vivica Fox, who killed it, oh, killed it. Yes. Thank you. And Jabari Red, who plays the husband, he is the lost father. And my son. Yeah. And your son. And my son. That's right. Yeah. How's it feel to be sitting with mama? Great again. Okay. <laughs> I, I love Vivica. Oh. Like, she's the best. We all love yes. Vivica. Vivica, you are, as you know, you are an icon. Thank you. You are an icon, you are a legend, you have done so much. And you are like fine wine, girl. You're getting better with time. So the first thing I gotta ask you is, what is the secret in looking so good? Happiness. <laughs> my spirit is so happy. Uh -huh. I am in such a wonderful space in my life. I never thought, turning 60 years old, that I would be so booked, busy, and blessed in that mm. order. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. yes, and beautiful. Thank you. you. Forgot the other B. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll take that. You know, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but. Uh -huh. Yeah, we be. Okay. As sexy red says, hey, sexy, hey, sexy, hey, sexy. So, what inspired you to get involved with this really innovative film, cutting edge film? My nephew, Jesse. You know, Jesse and I go back like Kool Aid. We really do. I know, <laughs> literally. I've known Jesse since he was eight years old. Wow. I love his family. I know the entire family back in the day. Uh, his mom, I would always see them at auditions. Uh, Journey worked on Journey, right, Jesse? Out all night. Out all night, all night. yes, Miss <laughs> Patty LaBelle. Uh, so we go back, and then we just all like connected. I used to go over to their house all the time. Their mom would do a fish fry, french fries, and sauteed spinach. What? Yeah, which is still one of my favorite meals to this day. <laughs> and Janet reminded me, Jesse's mom, the other night, she's like, 27 years. Wow. 27, I've been knowing you, she said 27 years, but I think it's longer, a little bit longer, but to her it was 27 years. Oh, yeah. So when Jesse approached me about this, she said, I need you. And that really was all he had to say. And I said, well, nephew, when you're really ready to go and you got it together, I'm here for you. Yeah. And now here we are, our film, we have a film out that is, I feel, going to be a classic. Right. Yeah. Yes. And it's very cutting edge. We don't, it's, and what I love about it, there's so many universal themes in it. Yes. It is cutting edge because it's about two men who love each exactly. other. Exactly. But then it's about forgiveness and mm -hmm. coming together. Yes. What was it that inspired you the most about it? In terms of the film itself. Well, the fact, well, I hate to say that I got to be the lead. No, I'm wait, 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 and you killed it. You killed it. Oh my God. Ain't nothing new. Well, that, and the character was like so many layers. It was. And can I tell you, I've seen the movie now five times. We've been all over America, we went to London, and each time I watch the film, I discover something, something new. new. Like every time, like last night, I finally heard in the film when he said, Forgive yourself. Yeah. That was deep. Move on. Forgive yourself because we 
have a tendency when things happen in life to just carry that burden with us and, and, and let it weigh you down and never be able to just See, I believe in accountability. Vivica yeah, does. Yeah. Vivica, I think that's another reason why I'm so happy and I'm going to stop talking so much. But accountability, I've been able to look in the mirror and take accountability for all of my actions, good, bad, and and, and move forward. Yeah. And say, we're not going to do that again. Yeah. Or if we do it again, we're going to do it better. Right. Yeah. And you were, a, who knew you were a comedic actress? <laughs> Yo, Don't forget. yo! I did do Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's true. That's true. You did do Curb Your Enthusiasm. So I, a lot of when I was watching Cassandra last night, I was like, a lot that I learned during Curb Your Enthusiasm, I brought to life with Cassandra. You had the theater on the floor with laughter. You just your facial expressions and everything, and the way it was written, but the way you delivered it Thank you. was truly amazing. Well, that's because Jesse let me play too. Yeah, and but you touch people's heart at the same time. Yeah. So that, like you said, a complex character. So yes. congratulations. Thank you, sweetheart. And what was it like for you, Jabari? Uh, getting to work with these greats? Yes. And, and playing the husband? Yeah. Yes, it was amazing. You know, uh, Jesse and Bill could brought just such professionalism to, to the set and just yeah. such craft, just the perfect craftsmanship. Yes. Like, yeah. And it's the perfect inspiration for an actor like myself, you know? Like, the first two days, what did we do? We cried. We the cried the whole, whole time. time. <laughs> cried the whole <laughs> time. But that, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the greatness of this movie, that it really does take you on an emotional roller coaster yeah. of laughter and just yeah. sadness. So you're crying one minute and you laugh in the next second. That's like, that part. So that's facts. Yeah. That's facts. Well, congratulations to both of you. Vivica, yes. you are, um, you know, you are such an amazing woman. Thank now, you. Now, are you, are you Buddha? No, girl, no, I wish. wish. That's the so what are you like. what are you looking for? <laughs> Apartment. And but I've always what said does that, that need to be? But can I straighten up one thing for y'all? I am not taking applications. Okay. It was a joke. Let they were they got, they got ready Let to do it. It was a joke. Let like know. That. I've no. said it so many times in interviews, but for some odd reason, when I recently said it, it went viral. Yeah. Yeah. And then, crazy. Oh my God. The DMs. I know your DMs. I was his PJ. They sent to my agent, Sheila. I was like, what? But next time y'all send pictures, pictures help. <laughs> She said, make sure you send a picture. I might make an exception if right. you send a picture. Yeah. So, but, but no, I'm not a partner. I want somebody that's fun. I want someone that's at the stage in life that I am. I love, I'm comfortable in the skin I'm, I'm in. Right. I like to have fun. Right. I like to travel. I like to shop. <laughs> you better have a black card, y'all. That part. Uh, <laughs> or at least platinum. <laughs> Come on, standards. Let's go, standards. <laughs> You know, have a joy for life, love the Lord. Yes, yes, Your spirit. Amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah, and be good to your family. Be that, a good person. Be a good person. Yeah. All right, and no, do not slide in the DMs. She's don't, said. I really don't. But yeah. if you do, send a photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just a couple of last things. Yes. We ask everybody this. What is your bad habit? My bad habit, I am very, uh, I'm like ADD. Like, I, I like things in place. Like, I'm always, like when I wake up, I like my candles. It's got to smell good. Things have to be in order. Awesome. Uh, in that order. OCD. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Coleman. Uh, yeah, so I'm OCD. Just for the pickup of that. Yeah, so I'm OCD. I, I just, I'm a little bit of a neat freak. I would say that's my worst habit. But <laughs> one of my best habits. Because I like organization on my sets. I like things. I like to make that's, my days. That's dope. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It should always smell good. <laughs> <laughs> We got a couple, you know. Um, oh, he got a whole list. <laughs> and uh, he's like, how much time you got? Oh, uh, shit, yeah, right? You know, um, let's say, let's, 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 let's keep it real. Um, question, questioning your potential sometimes. You know, sometimes you're getting your own head. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you get in your own head, and like you, you, you always have to have a village. That's why get I appreciate out of your own way. Exactly. That's why I appreciate it, you and Jesse, because you know you have to have a village to keep pushing. You know, yeah. and yeah, so we I love, love it. it. Yes, thank, so. thank you, thank you. Now, Vivica, is Fifty Cent still the love of your life? No. Good. He was one of them. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sorry. We want to keep this in the film if we can. I'm oh, sorry. okay, sure. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, we're gonna have to edit that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
know, but anyway, that was just the that was just the it's only okay. question. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the film is in theaters now. Yes. Y'all check it out. It's the Lost Holiday. Yes. You know, and we gonna do a toast to it, y'all. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm like, where's your drink? I know. Yes. I need to get my drink. Let me tell you something. This lady, you come in. She feeds you. She made us some chicken wings. Hot <laughs> some chicken, is hot on hot point. point. I have a nice little glass of wine, so why don't we eat it with a toast? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.